welcome to St. Teresa of Calcutta Parish as we celebrate the solemnity of Corpus Christi. Celebrating Mass with us this evening is Father Brandt. He will be assisted by Deacon Moo. Before we begin Mass this evening, will you please pray with me the prayer for our parish mortgage contribution program. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and loving God, we know that it is by your hand that our parish has been guided to create a faithful and supportive community. As we welcome all members to help build up your kingdom within our parish, we ask that you guide us to be the faithful stewards of the gifts you have entrusted to us by generously giving to the continued growth of our parish community. In doing so, we model the words of Mother Teresa, who reminds us to reach out to others in love and compassion, <coughs> giving where it is most needed, and the sh share the joy of loving with everyone. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our entrance hymn is number 310 in your Breaking Bread books, Table of Plenty. That would help. Good evening. This evening we come together to celebrate the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ, traditionally Corpus Christi Sunday. And our Mass this evening is being offered for Maurice Drazier. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God most high, he blessed Abram with these words, Blessed be Abram by God most high, the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. 
the word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus explained, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. And he spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Well, five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about five thousand. And then he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about fifty. They did so, and made them all sit down. Then, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled twelve wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. We've all heard or read or watched a mystery story. In, in those mystery stories, the author knows the end all along. But to us, the watcher or the reader, the mystery is revealed bit by bit until all the pieces fit. And we say, I never suspected that person. We use this term mystery in our everyday lives as well. We often say, why did they do that? Or why did that happen? And we often respond, it's a mystery to me. We've come to use that word mystery to describe an event that is initially unexplainable. But in the long run, we all expect it to be solved so that we all can understand it. Now, in Scripture, the word mystery means something very different. When applied to an event or an action that takes place, the word mystery means the gradual unfolding of God's will in our lives. That's true about the sacraments and true about the event that we celebrate today, namely the great mystery of the church, that of the most holy body and blood, namely the Eucharist. We celebrate the real presence of Jesus in the bread and wine. What we see here on the altar is not just a memorial of the Last Supper, but it's when Jesus himself comes to us. It's a mystery we can't fully understand or explain, but that belief in the real presence of Jesus is the source and summit of all we do in the church. It is so important that today, we begin a three-year Eucharistic revival in the United States. It is a well-known fact that many Catholics do not believe in the real presence. So in the coming year, the focus will be on the revival in the Archdiocese, culminating in a Eucharistic Congress in Doylestown in September of 23. The following year, 23 and 24, 
the emphasis and focus will be on parish renewal. So while we are entering this revival of the belief in the Eucharist, let's pause and take a little deeper look into this great mystery. And I begin with a story about a priest having breakfast with a Muslim student in Lebanon. The student began to question the priest concerning this Catholic teaching on the Eucharist. Well, the priest thought he was responding to the student's concern about this belief of the real presence. But the real interest that that student has was this. He said, if Catholics truly believed that they were receiving the actual body and blood of Christ, why do they not live his teachings in their lives? And therein lies our challenge and the need for a revival in the belief of the real presence. Not just to believe it, but to live it and to live that presence in our everyday lives. So today's feast is really about belief and about discipleship. It's about Jesus' gift of himself to us and in turn our gift of ourselves to others. Certainly today we celebrate the transformation of ordinary bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. And it is with faith that we accept the awesome gift of the real presence of Jesus. But that gift of Jesus giving himself to us implies us handing ourselves to others. When we say amen as we received him in Eucharist, that's just not a word. We are really making an act of faith. We become part of him and we are accepting his way of life. We are promising with that amen to act like him and follow his commands. Our amen is really a promise to do what he did when he reached out to others in need, when he accepted people as they were, when he offered forgiveness, when he sat down with sinners, when he comforted those in pain, when he gave faith to those who had despaired, when he prayed to his Father. His entire ministry was one in which he gave of himself every day through his healing, his forgiving, and his accepting. And our amen, when we say it, means we pledge to do the same. We pledge to live our faith. Receiving Christ in communion at the Mass is not a private moment between ourselves and Jesus. Communion with the body and blood of Christ implies communion with each other. We, though many, are one body. When we receive Eucharist, we become one with Jesus and one with each other. And to share in that divinity means we are to give to others what he gave to us, namely, to offer compassion, acceptance, patience, and forgiveness to those in our lives. We need to live the life that Jesus taught us to live when he said at the Last Supper, do this in remembrance of me. As he instituted the Eucharist, he wasn't just talking about repeating the act of consecration when he said, do this in remembrance of me. He was also saying, live your lives as I have lived mine. Do as I did in remembrance of me. I pass my life on to you, and you can pass this life on to others. So today we celebrate the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, and we celebrate by not just receiving it, but by going forth from here as the body of Christ, to live his presence into our world by the way we speak, the way we treat others, and we live as Christ lived. That is why the third year of Eucharistic revival that begins today is called the year of going out on mission, the year of becoming disciples. This is not easy because it requires us to make a change in our lives that is real, not superficial, but a transformation of ourselves. It requires us to let go of our own needs and focus on the needs of others. It requires us to be selfless rather than selfish. 
And that is the challenge of this feast of Corpus Christi. And that challenge is something that we have to be ready to live. We are to be Jesus' life poured out in our everyday life. So today we be this three-year journey to reaffirm our belief in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, and then to go forth from here into our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our schools, our homes, with Christ, so as to make a secular world sacred again. We can begin the preparation and this three-year journey by focusing on the Mass, by getting to understand it a little better, by thinking about what each part means, and how the Mass is celebrated, and how to be fully engaged in that Mass. And then we can attend Eucharistic Exposition. Every Wednesday, the Blessed Sacrament is exposed in the chapel after the morning Mass, and it culminates with a holy hour that evening. Jesus is in the chapel waiting for us to join him. We, not be, we may not be able to fully understand or explain the mystery of the real presence of Jesus. In our minds, but in our heart, through faith, we can use this belief to guide our lives. And we can solve the mystery of why many Catholics do not believe in the real presence. All we have to do is live our lives in remembrance of him. Please stand for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Press men in for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Confident of the abiding presence of Christ, we bring our prayers and petitions to the Father. For the church throughout the world, may the Lord strengthen faithful communities united in the love of God and neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in embracing sound and moral principles in solving the issues before them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and in need, may the love of Christ conform them and give them hope in the promise of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For fathers that have given us life, that they see their children as gifts from God and teach them to hear and follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this Eucharistic assembly, may the Lord help us grow in faith and love, bearing fruit in the manner of our lives and the abundance of our service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Ruth Long, Doris Kapinski, commits be smell, and Kenny Webb, that in seeking the face of God, they may live in everlasting joy with God in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of abundant love, as we bring our needs before you, we ask that you hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our second collection is for our parish mortgage contribution program. Please join us in our preparation hymn. 
found at number 368, Adoro Te Devote, number Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your heart. O Lord, grant your church the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and every word to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice, and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial, as we eat his flesh that has been sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that has been poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with the angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when is once for his disciples, so now for us. He opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which you show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in his body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis our Pope and Nelson our Bishop, with the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and peace. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Teresa of Calcutta and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory, glory are yours now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 361, Bread of Angels, number 361.
please join in singing number 365, Come Christ Beloved, number 365. Before we conclude our liturgy this evening, I do need to make an announcement. Uh, Father Pigeon has been given a change of residence. He will no longer reside here in our parish of St. Teresa. He has taken an administrative leave and will reside at the priest residence at St. Joseph Villa in Derby. This administrative leave has nothing to do with anything illegal or immoral. It's just a process that Father's going through with the Archdiocese. Um, if anyone would like to contact him at the villa, that is fine, and we will get the address in the bulletin next week. And um, just continue to pray for him as he and the Archdiocese work out as his, what his next steps will be. We are in need of adoration volunteers on Wednesday in the chapel, as Deacon Lou had said in his homily, for the importance of the Blessed Sacrament. The new St. Teresa of Calcutta Chorale will begin this fall. They're looking for talented singers. See the bulletin for details. Our parish youth group will be collecting donations next week for their annual Steubenville retreat. And the American Red Cross is holding a blood drive in the Education Center on Tuesday, June 28th. Please see the bulletin for details. Let us stand and pray. O Lord, grant that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by the reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a great evening. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 565, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow, number 565.